<laughs> yeah, I'm still owed some nudes by uh, Striders. Uh, still waiting on those. Just, just saying. You, I you, just won't, you won't be you impressed. Know, I just I'm, imagine I'm, him like looking, in the, looking in the mirror. And he's like, I'm still owed some nudes. <laughs> 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 Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whenever the hell else we come up with this week, Steam's in your PC, stealing your CPU IDs, and we're going to tell you why that's possibly a good thing, and the Wacky Physics Motorbike Simulator Urban Trial Playground is out, and it supports Vulcan. Master of Hot Takes, Rich Geldrick, gives us his two cents. And much like two actual pennies, it's not worth the, worth the cost, time, or effort. And Mozilla's waiting for rain, because Godot's going to make it. Did you know NVIDIA is winning? Hell, at this point, they're just competing with themselves. And Doom gets Vulcan. Live long and party like it's 1993. I guess you should clarify what kind of Doom that is. Cause... Jeez, man. <laughs> wait, it's 1993, wait. come on. Wait I thought that was momentum. Right. Anyway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Old Man Ben. That is Jordan Swang. And Hello. that buzzkill in Britannia is uh, one Pedro Mateus. And together, Hello. Jordan is live. <laughs> Helping us form. What is it called? Oh, Cocaine Ultra. Suck it, you two. You didn't get this one. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> ASMR. What's up, Jordan? How's the move going, baby? Oh, well, I'm, I'm getting the, I'm getting the keys tomorrow, which is going to be nice. I, I asked them, it's like, hey, can we can we just meet up very early in the morning? And now we're going to meet up at five o'clock on a Sunday at like some random ass fucking mall, too. So, oh, man, that sounds <laughs> sketchy. Yeah, it's like this is I'm not like doing dead drops for the KGB. I just want the keys to my fucking unit. Why can't we just meet at the unit so I can, you know, you can give me the keys. I can verify that I can put them in the lock and turn them. Mm-hmm. And then we can go on a merry way. <laughs> nah, man, let's let's add some complicated effy steps in between that. Yeah. <laughs> Pedro, have you bought your Ryzen 3000 yet? D- Come on, Computex hasn't happened yet. It's supposedly it's in May, so we're going to w- wait and see. I mean, he's, if he's the gonna, leaks are anything post to go by, right I now. probably will. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that's five hundred pounds going out of my bank account, and oh, poor, bank. poor you, five hundred pounds going out of your bank account. My heart, my heart weeps for you, Pedro. <laughs> okay. well, what about you, Ben? What's up? I hear uh, you, Batman. Oh, goddamn, Batman! Really? Uh, I just out of curiosity, I was like, I'm gonna play with this Lutris thing, so I had the Arkham Knight, and you can't really play that with Proton, so I've. It's a Batman game. Over the period of a month, I probably have like seven hours into it. Right up the butt of a game-breaking bug. To You go to the Google, you get the bad news from Reddit. Then you get the confirmed bad news from the Steam. And they're like, yeah, this is a known bug. You can't do anything. You're fucked. You got to start over again. Yeah, that, that happened with me in KOTOR 2 the first time I played it. Like, yeah. oh, you got to a point yeah, where it's Kotar like... 2 had a lot of those. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, it's just like, God. And it's it's not one of those things where you can correct either, because it's like, uh, if your alignment isn't either one extreme or the other, it just there's there's no case for it. They expected you to be either <laughs> co- too good or too evil, not mm. neutral. I only expect game-breaking bugs in the horse. I mean, the horse is really just a collection of game-breaking bugs. You can you can just see it every week that we need it. It's the Steam Bugs! God damn it. And well, uh, Tech Raider put out a, I guess it was a slow news day, and they put out an article that said, yeah, the NVIDIA RTX graphics are catching up to the um, the old series, and, well, that's not entirely true, because if you actually read the article, did you realize that the GTX 1060 is actually sitting pretty in first place, uh, according to the Steam survey, uh, for gaming video cards at around 15% of the Steam share, with the RTXs coming in at a close third, uh, with the second place in the uh, Steam lineup specifically being the 1050 Ti, which, I mean, yeah, you have a 970 worth of performance in what is a 75 watt TDP graphics card, that's pretty hard to beat. Also, you can use all the VRAM. Yep, you can use all four gigs. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) 
that, that, yeah, that, no, that, is, that is that is the biggest that is the biggest net win. If you have if you had a nine seventy, that, that fucking ten fifty Ti came out. You're like, God damn it! The North yep. remembers on that Nvidia. <laughs> And yeah, the uh, generational bump brought the RTX is closer, but yeah, they are still nowhere near the uh, the 1060 and its 980 like performance with a single six or eight pin connector, depending on which skew you got. So yeah, <laughs> I, I I mean it makes sense though, because <clears throat> I mean I mean let let let's be real. You're gonna if if you're if you're gonna build a PC and with the express pr- purpose of playing games, you're not really gonna buy an, uh, an AMD card because the price performance isn't there. The fact that the fact is, is that they're selling their top end of like two generations ago as their budget card, and it's not it it doesn't have the same power consumption. It it's it's a high end card and well, I mean, in all fairness, I mean, if you're looking for AMD or the open source goodness, then you can get a. 580 for like 130 bucks man yeah yeah 580 it, it, 480 even if the 590 is not really that expensive a vega for 56 for like two max yeah i i've i've seen i've seen vega 56s they're still over at least in canada they're still over uh 300 bucks uh but yeah the 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 other the other thing too is this article is like oh yeah well the 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 twenty sixty is like the fastest growing card yeah but most for the most part people aren't upgrading their systems like every year that is that is an entirely internet r gaming pc gaming <laughs> yeah that's a reddit thing, thing. <laughs> yeah I, I I built the system I swapped out the video card twice <laughs> actually one <laughs> once. <laughs> And other, other, think, otherwise, uh, it's been pretty static. So, just yeah. on the Nvidia thing, Nvidia this week they have released their um, RTX for all, which mm-hmm. I, I think Nvidia did a very good job in setting expectations because I didn't see anyone going, "Ah, oh, this is horrible." Finally, my twenty sixty beats their ten eighties and something. But <laughs> uh, everyone was trying it out to see how bad it was. That, that yeah. Was the, yeah, I was like, all right. What, what, That's what, the point we'll of it. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's it's not it's not to use. It's for developers who can't afford fucking RTX cards. It's a brilliant thing. All right, what's up next? Well, uh, like, like I said in the rundown, Master of Hot Takes, Rich Geldrick's like, oh my god, Epic is the best thing ever. I'm I'm a former Valve employee, so I know what I'm talking about. Herp derp. And of course, this, this is from uh, Dark Side <laughs> Gaming. Is that an like, actual quote? <laughs> pretty, it, 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 could it's a pretty, it could be <laughs> you, you, know, you never know right <laughs> the act so the actual quote you can find this on darksideofgaming.com uh notes and links in our show notes yeah steam was killing the pc game was killing pc gaming 30 percent tax on the entire industry it was unsustainable you have no idea how profitable steam was for valve actually we do because they don't make games anymore mm-hmm. it was a virtual printing press it distorted the entire company epic is fixing this for all gamers i just want to bring this up like 30 percent is not unsustainable at all. The issue here, and this this is what this is what devs were actually mad about, was the fact that if you're an indie dev, you cannot get your game in front of the faces of the people who will buy it. There, there's too many. There are too many games on Steam. The curation was not good enough, and high quality indie games were being mixed in with all of the other middling and low quality shit, and mm-hmm. they were getting pissed off. You can. Uh, because because it was sort of a free for all. It's why there's so much crap on the Play Store. So, if and again we 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 we've been talking about this at length week after week. That thirty percent buys you quite a bit, including like Steam sockets, a bunch of developer support, funding a ton of open source tools that will effectively put your game on other platforms at zero effort to you, which is kind yep. of huge. Um. It's it's it wasn't killing the gaming industry. It it was it was it was lack of visibility within the Steam platform that was. And this is this if Epic wants to succeed with their store, exclusives isn't aren't the way they're gonna do it. It's gonna be by yeah. providing and that visibility to games. Saying that Epic is fixing it by introducing bullshit, you know, exclusivity like you get on consoles nowadays to the PC ecosystem. Uh you know, not to mention the whole shitting on on high from, from on Linux. That's uh, yeah, no. <laughs> he may have worked for Valve, but there's probably a reason he's not there anymore. There, there, there there's there's another quote in here I want to I want to bring up that like <laughs> okay, 
that he's or he, he's been, he was specifically saying that like oh well uh steam will just be for like second tier shovelware indie shit and everything else epic Way will just dominate the triple a mm-hmm. like, <laughs> no nope that's that that's the thing indies are gonna stop going to steam because again they're not making they're not making as much money because they can't sell their games to the people who they want to buy their games indies that, that, are going that. to the switch yeah, they're, they're they're yeah they're going to the Switch store. They're going to the PlayStation store because at least then they get like a larger cut. And you know, every time you want to, they want so if you want to buy a game and play it on another system, you have to buy the game on the other system, right? That's definitely one yep. of the things, man. And at the end of the day, basically, I I like choice, and like it or not, I mean, exclusives there's still choice, bad choices, yeah. But I think it'd be a good thing for developers to remember that better rev share. It only works if people are able to buy your game, you know. If you have, mm -hmm. if you get on Epic and like you get 10 sales versus, and you get, you know, 90% versus like Steam and you're selling 10,000, I know these are just imaginary situations that could never possibly happen. But what do we do if Epic comes to Linux? Right now, the choice is quite simple. We don't have one. Easy choice mm -hmm. to make. But I, I will definitely. Why? This even hurts me to say. If Epic <laughs> does show the human courtesy of saying, okay, here's your Linux port. I mean, we're going to support Linux. I'm like, okay, well, to support Linux, I got to support this bullshit platform. Fine. Choice is good. Options, good. However, do you buy from develop? I think any developer or publisher that pulls like the uh, Metro bullshit or borderlands mm -hmm. like for no reason well and borderlands wasn't announced on steam was it no yeah, it i don't was. i don't was borderlands it? 3 no the, it the, was the, on pre-orders okay you yeah. do think that had pre-order on steam mm -hmm. and pulled the rug then went um epic exclusive eat a bag of dicks not buying it period yeah, no, and uh, Ruddy Pitchford was on Twitter having a little bit of a meltdown because it's like, oh yeah, no, it, it, the Epic Store is a is a much better deal. It's like, yes, that's greed talking. That's what I was talking about. Well, that's what I've been talking about. Well, I the like the poll weeks. that he put up. He was like, well, what will you be playing? And it was like Epic Store, a P no, it was PC, Xbox, or other whatever. And uh, somebody said, oh yeah, someone asked about yeah. Linux and just like, isn't that other? Other, and I was like, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. so is pancakes, motherfucker. <laughs> and 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 and, that, and that, that that's kind of the thing, right? Like, even if even if the Epic Store does support Linux, you can install it on your freaking system. There's no developer support for it. You're stuck with whoever is willing to hit export on UE4 or Unity still. Mm. And um, that's the thing. Uh, Even if Epic brings out the store, Proton is open source. They could easily build it and integrate it themselves, and they could probably get most of their lineup working on Linux. So so, so b basically they're going to pull an Oracle and be like, yeah, we're going to make our own Red Hat with Blackjack and Hunter as well, so we're going to force you to buy it if you, wanna, if you want uh, that Oracle support. That'll be great. Right. That'll be awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, this comes from our hardware. Uh, Ragnarok Dell. Posting. I sent an email to Gabe asking for clarifications on Steam hardware survey. One of Al's employees answered, and they did. They got back. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how, how do these things actually work? Because they always have been terribly mysterious. And Ooh. I know, right? <laughs> so Spooky. <laughs> and he's like hey man i just want to get some clarification how does this work you know uh cpu processors and all that but dude wrote back and he's like you know given user surveyed once per year the data reported they have started gathering cpu brand strings so we might get that little bit of data bits uh and they would even say hey we could do a better job aggregating those strings and uh Things like Skylake will show up or Ryzen and all actually seeing stuff. the breakdown of those would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. from Jason from Valve. And I thought, hey, if we're going to do something like that, Valve, call me. Uh, here's a wild idea. How, how about like listing people's system specs when they leave a review? I'm not saying make it mandatory, but at, at least weigh that review heavier than somebody who will come in and it's like, this game runs perfect on my Pentium 70. Or... <laughs> That, that that would actually be an interesting little bit of business intelligence. Like, oh, you get reviews near the top of the review pile. It's like this guy has the same video card as you, or this guy has the same mm -hmm. video uh, CPU as you. 
See that 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 is actually like that would that's the make that's the makes with the working section of the fucking Jericho This right is pretty there, much it. Right? We're all sick and tired of. You're gonna drive us out of business. Don't say that. Works for me, or it r- runs perfectly acceptable. I mean, could be 720p, 24 frames a second. So I was like, oh, this is, this is great. You know, I'm sipping his coffee while the house is on fire. Where yeah. you know, I think any sane person's like, okay, 1080p, 60s are base target. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2019, I think that's a reasonable request. I, and, I, I, uh, I, I, I still maintain some people are just stuck on crappy laptops, though. It's mm-hmm. unavoidable. There are a lot of people like that, yes. And the thing here about this specific question is, the first question he asked was a bit too broad. It's like, how do you do the Steam hardware survey? And then he gave a couple of specific examples, sort of leading the question. And the person uh, who responded from Valve probably under the guise, uh, under the instructions or the guide of uh, whatever passes for, you know, PR wait, wait, inside do, Valve. Do, do you think they make them like, oh, this was addressed to Gabe here. You have to wear the fake beard when you're right. Yes. <laughs> oh, what, what, what they, they got like the fucking Michael Myers rubber Gabe and yeah. that they make everyone wear. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, the, the person who replied basically latched on to those specific uh, examples that the leading question gave and didn't end up revealing much of anything. Yeah, we got little tidbits like, yeah, we're actually getting CPU ID, so we get like family generations of Ryzen's and, and uh, Skylakes was the specific example. Uh, so yeah, it, that's interesting to know, but I was kind of interested in the whole answer, please. Well, that, 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 that's the thing. If, if you want, if you want the actual data, you gotta, you gotta give Valve money, right? Cause yeah. we, this we, is we, true. We, this... Valve's gotta learn to change though. Yeah. They, well, they I, have I, to, I, they are yeah, genuinely I, have some, you know, Sweeney's walked in and bought his way into the table. Yeah. So they literally, that, yes. Like, hey, you know, maybe tell people oh. how shit goes on. Maybe that's 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 just my ten cents. Am I right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, all that ten cent money's gonna go somewhere. Oh, no, Tyler. <laughs> okay, we well, have a couple right. of game updates, but this one this one's kind of dubious. Yes, yes, yes. It is. So apparently, uh, someone on um, on Reddit originally did a bit of a um, research. And then the fine folks from PC Games then decided to write an article on it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's been 14 years since Black Mesa started development. Yes, Black Mesa, the Half-Life mod that basically aimed to completely redo Scratch the first Half-Life uh, in the Source engine, not just what Valve did, which was basically import all the old assets and make them work with the Source engine. No, no, no. They're d- going in and redoing everything to an excruciating detail. But yeah, apparently it's been 14 years, and the comparison being raised here is that it's been in development longer than Duke Nukem Forever was. Yes, it has been for a whole month more. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 again, this is comparing apples and chainsaws, though, right? Like one of them was a funded project by you know a, a game com- by a game studio that went through multiple iterations and then was finished by another game studio. This was a mod that turned into a total conversion that turned into a standalone uh, that was developed by fans that was later sold on Steam because they realized, hey, we're dumping money into this. We need to recoup some of those losses. Not yeah. not exactly not exactly the same thing. That's like me complaining about the development cycle of Super Tux Cart. It's like, oh no, this open source game isn't releasing on my schedule. How dare? How dare? <laughs> And they also have the Half-Life 3 comparison, but, you know, at least Black Mesa has something that you can play. You can play, like, 75% of the game. It's just the Zen levels that aren't done yet. Well, they are done yet. They're just, they don't want to release it because they're still selling <laughs> under the promise that they will be released someday. The hey, moment man. they do, a, that money's going to dry up. It can be difficult to cut off them. Then then people can throw down some real reviews. And B, don't, uh-huh. C, don't jinx it. They need to change that lighting engine just one more time. <laughs> what, are, are we calling this distance syndrome <laughs> pretty much yeah <laughs> although this is, didn't take 14 years to release so there's that <laughs> I, don't, I don't know when did nitronic rush enter development because well they rubbed that out in like two years at university 
Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was an MIT licensed game. <laughs> that was definitely a thing. Okay. Do we have any new games this week? Um, yes, we yes, do. We got, we, we got a couple. We've been talking about Tangle Deep for a while, and lo and behold, they got a brand new uh, DLC. I, this is more akin to an expansion pack than DLC. <laughs> it's called The Legend of Shara. Um, and it adds a bunch of stuff. It adds a little prequel campaign. Um, it uh, it has a couple uh, sections where you can go into like an ultra randomized dun- dungeon where like the sprites and the monsters and everything are entirely randomized. Um, there's a bunch of other modifications to the base game. Um, like uh, they add a new they add a new job. They increase the level cap. New monsters, etc., etc., etc. If you're a big fan of Tangle Deep, um, you. For eight ninety nine, uh, for Canadian, that's you get a decent amount of content, uh, to uh, to add to your base game. Um, yeah, that 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 that's pretty much it. It's not it's not quite like Team Cherry sized update that they released for free, <laughs> but you know, I I think it's reasonable for people to want to charge for their work. Yeah, mm-hmm. and half the price for an expansion pack compared to the original game itself that's pretty good and uh the <laughs> i see that they haven't changed the uh minimum requirements to say that you need a graphics card supporting dx9 or dx11 with 9.3 capabilities yeah that, DXVK, that needs man. To change. DXVK. <laughs> if it supports vulcan it do that's right hey check this out speaking of vulcan urban Ooh. trial playground this new installment I didn't know it's a new. I didn't know there was a previous installment. Uh, you ride around a bike, in California, and it is a straight up. Well, gee, I, it looks like a sight bike. Uh, got busy with Action Hank, and, it, and they're trying to look like Trials, the game Trials. I, I don't know. I, man, I, man, maybe man. somebody uh, rubbed Goat Goat Simulator up next to it. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like the, the, the last time we played a game like this, we had some issues. So my first thought was like, I wonder how many memory leaks it has. I, I guess if it does, they should probably list a swap partition on uh, the system requirements. But then I scroll down to the system requirements and I'm like, oh, apparently this thing uses Vulcan because mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. that's explicitly called out. Uh, your video card needs to support Vulcan to play this game. So I think that that in itself is noteworthy enough. So you get a plug for that. It's uh, 6 yeah, and it has local multiplayer and regular online normal people multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Might have to pick this up just to play around with it. Yeah, it's cheap I did send them an email. I haven't heard a reply yet. But it's seven uh, bucks, man. Just yeah, I looked at like oh mixed reviews. So what's up with that? And I had a look in the you know the three reviews that my um, very limited uh, language processor can handle that I could understand, that is. Uh, They basically said, oh yeah, the physics are bad. And I'm like, okay, this is one of those games. This is uh, the Elastomania Excite Bike type of situation. And the thing in those games is to figure out the physics and wrap your brain around them. So why why are you complaining about the physics? Me? I do do that all the time in Rocket League. What are you talking about? (laughs) No, man. Especially when Ven starts playing with the mutators. It would be interesting. I do not go into a fuck around simulator expecting accurate physics. No. No. (laughs) See, that's the thing, though. I think think at some point we need to make that just to show people how boring it would actually be. Uh, (laughs) Oh. Yeah. No. Legit physics, the game. (laughs) Robot wants it all, baby. They, they want they want it all right all right so apparently there was a series of games called robot wants robot wants kitty robot wants puppy robot wants some fucking another robot that makes blowjobs and ice cream anyways uh they've been scooped all up and put in a little bundle here robot wants it all that contains all of them and a brand new one called robot wants justice because robot know, wants robot... 20 bucks is what <laughs> yeah ro- I, I, was, I was gonna say uh ro- <laughs> robot got their kid taken away and they gotta pay some alimony so that's uh, that's, yeah. that's why robot wants twenty. Unless bucks. this is a Stephen sausage roll type of thing, that's a very hard price to swallow for what is a two D well, hipster pixel bullshit. Well, type so, of game. so so supposedly they're supposed to be very very tight like short run Metroidvania games that you can like clear out in an hour or two. Um, yeah, and you you get you get like what six of them or some shit like that. Mm. Um, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's worth twenty bucks. Like maybe uh-huh. if they're like, oh well, if you bought them all individually, it'd be worth like forty bucks. So you're actually saving a bunch of money. Uh, 
I, 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 don't, I don't know about that. Um, hmm. How old are these games? Do they have like any nostalgia things going for them? Or? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, well, th this is the first thing they have listed on Steam, which tells me these might have been Newgrounds games. Oh. Possibly, yeah. Could have been. <laughs> I don't know. I do not know. So, mm. well, I guess to uh, wrap up the new games, we do have Warplanes World War II Dogfight. And uh, yeah, uh, apparently Ven ran into a bit of an issue getting the uh, the game to run. I did run okay, into the well, exact well, same well, issue. Let's have the brakes on that, sweetheart. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't fucking launch. And this calculates as a bit of an issue when you ballpark. What's a major issue in Pedro <laughs> See, uh, I've seen those bit of an issues. It's like, oh, it's one of those Unity games. Okay, let's go into the prefs file. And I went into the prefs file and I changed the uh, little setting that says use native resolution. And I changed that from a zero to one. And look, it works now. I uh, want a refund. <laughs> But yeah, no, it, the very little I played of it, it's it's actually pretty simple, all things considered. Uh, like, the controls are very simple. It's not, you're not looking at um, Microsoft Flight Simulator type of situation here at all. Uh, are you looking uh, at Top it, Gun for the NES, or? Uh, what was that mm. Sega one that had the arcade cabinet? I can't remember what it was I'm called. I'm just going to leave you hanging. What this reminds me of, there was like some... <laughs> flight arcade flight sim game on dos man that was like naval mm -hmm. whatever and you got to play with it like that but i got that gray screen i was like ah you nope don't care enough sorry yeah no like the the full 3d ones there were two of these uh like dog fight style games that i liked one was crimson skies also a microsoft one mm -hmm. uh and the second one was uh airfix dog fighter that was i love that game I absolutely love that game where you would like fight a uh, like dogfight planes inside a house. It's like the little teeny tiny airfix planes. Yeah. Got to do yeah. one of those on Tuesday maybe. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> if we get this up and running, we can do something like that. But this just I mean it's 2019. You didn't check your Linux build. No. No. <laughs> they just hit export. Hit exports. Like, <laughs> put it in the store. Quality control yeah. issues, Valve. Gonna catch it up with work. You. you could just run it in Proton. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Proton version works out of the box. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Coming up next. I, I hate Jim. Even dun, the strong dun, dun, I hate it. Dun, dun, dun. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the news are coming. But before we get to the, the nudes are coming. Well, well, the nudes They're are right also here, coming, buddy. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still owed some nudes by uh, Striders. Uh, still waiting on those. Just, just saying. You, I can you, just won't, you won't be you know, impressed. I just I, imagine I, I, him like looking, looking in the mirror. And he's like, I'm still owed some nudes. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean, I've seen it all in person. I'm not impressed. Oh, um, come on, man. <laughs> that, maybe just a little bit. No. Uh, the, the, this is a man who has no ass. <laughs> Oh well, that's disappointing. If you In want to be a, if, if if you want to be someone with the biggest butt, you can you know do some squats or you can take a shortcut and head on over put to some junk in our trunk. Cast, yeah, put some junk in our trunk. Uh, the next dot com. Click click that support the show button. We got Amazon uh, affiliate links. We got humble partner links. All sorts of stuff you can do to buy stuff for you, and then we get money as a result of it. And sometimes charity gets some Very money. Sweet. Said. Uh, PayPal links, Bitcoin, whatever. It's all good. You can also head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, where a whole lot of you, I think it's still 288 of you, or two, 122 of you are giving us 288 bucks a week to come up with this hey, Jordan, Jordan, nonsense. I made a thing. Look, look, it's a thing, and I made Behind it. Behind the sausage. <laughs> Behind the sausage. If you're ever curious about what, what goes on and in going into a Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, playing with all the fancy audio bullshit that we have now, uh, watch that and be bored. Indeed, and you too can see you can you can learn about Microsoft Word Perfect. Um, yeah, uh, you know, if we as as I mentioned before, we got uh, we got Amazon affiliate links. We also have an Amazon wish list. I, guess. I thought we were going to do that at the end. Uh, but whatever. This is what it's like on my end, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, this, is, this, is, this is behind the sausage. Yeah, buy buy, yeah, buy some Hell shirt. Make make it look like you're a huge fan of mayonnaise when really you're just a huge fan of mayonnaise. Elks. Yeah, we do have a wish list. Uh, if you're like fuck all that, man, get some hardware, and we have uh, 
a returning undisputed fuck mothering champion. Oh boy. Mike G. Mike G. <laughs> Mike G. Check it out. Where's Mike? There's Mike. Check it out. That's Mike. I don't know where that shot is. I'm scared to push buttons because some things are <laughs> way too You were scared on Wednesday, too. <laughs> yeah, I was, man. I was like, I don't want to risk this, man. Crotch cam. Crotch cam. No, Do it. no. That, that's for other stream, Jordan. Hush. Anyway, Mike's in a note, which I have to read. So I haven't read it yet, Mike. Hopefully, it through. Your wish list was entirely too long. Hopefully, I could knock a few of these off so it's more manageable. Love you guys. Ouch. Um, <laughs> always. Mike G. That hurt. Oh, couldn't have cut us deep. Uh, so, so, so what you, what you get, sweetheart? I got toys. We, we got toys for the new computer thing we're going to build Woo! so I can play X-Bill at like 11 frames a second. Ski free, man. <laughs> Dude. Thanks, Mike. Check this out. Noctua. Big fan. That's a fan. It's 140 <laughs> millimeters. That's going on the back of the heat sink on the thread record. Nice. Nice. And oh, I don't know if I can show these off. Uh out of curiosity, I was like, what the hell's this? And I was like, oh, I didn't even remember that was on the list because I was curious if they were gonna work. I got lighting and shit now that I haven't had a chance Ooh. to play with. So <laughs> I guess I'll throw. And of the generosity, awesomeness, some memory RAM. Yes. Right. Not 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 to be confused with the SSDs. The well, no, I mean, similarly in all fairness, I, I got some memory RAM too. <laughs> <laughs> and hang on, where's it at? We're not dead yet. Uh, I also bought some SSDs and NVMe drives. At 970 yes. Evo. Yeah, buddy. That's going to be the scratch drive. This drive, it's dead. It's not even out of the box and it's dead. I'm gonna kill it. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> We're gonna have a great time. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna rip with the thread ripper, man. Dude, um, when do you get? You, how do you guys go through that cycle? Because you get excited, and you're like, ah. Then I go through the cycle, of like pulling the trigger and like spending the money. And thanks everybody who supported this because we're using your money to do this nonsense. Um, then the crippling depression after spending the money, you're like, ah. Then we were talking in the pre-pre super shows and it's like, oh, then everything goes like ten, fifteen dollars cheaper the next day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, buyer's remorse. Oh, just or it, drag no, that it, in. <laughs> it, it, it either drops twenty percent or the new model comes out that's like leaps and bounds better than the thing you yeah. see. But I think everything's gonna be coming up Tuesday. I it's me, so I picked up like used stuff where I could, like the motherboard, that's gonna be the big thing. And if everything clicks together, we'll see what type of videos we can get together that i'm full on in the like dread part of it so it's it's <laughs> happening it's gonna be brilliant we're gonna be nice. able to do some new awesome zany bullshit with it so speaking of zany bullshit we got a game jam to talk about oh shit. indeed uh, itch.io every now and then they do a bit of a linux game jam well they did one last year and they're doing one this year as well so uh, there's 174 people that have joined, but only the one entry. And uh, they like the rules are pretty simple. You can use any engine, uh, any specific programming for the game that you're uh, delivering. Okay. <laughs> Simon the Kidnapper Part Duke. Yeah, what happened to Part One? He got kidnapped. <laughs> Somebody stole it. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. So, uh, the, the, and, the, uh, what I was going to say, uh, I was just going to say, uh, submissions for this are due on the 19th of April, so you can finish your game and then smoke a big old bowl afterwards. Yep. Got to get it ready for 420. Uh, but yeah, the, the one thing that stuck out for me is that when you have a game jam, there's usually a theme. And with this one, there, there's not that I could see, and that kind of bugs me. Cross platform. The, 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 the theme is don't use Proton. <laughs> That's what the theme is. <laughs> yeah, that's not a theme. That's usually just one of the rules. But, you know, when you have a theme in the jam, uh, the interesting thing is to see what people come up with around that theme that stretches the definition. And that's really interesting to see and to see what people come up with to stretch said definition. Well, that's so, going to be interesting. Uh, but, I mean, it's not like theme jam, which my brain immediately goes to. Well, how about theremin jam? It has to be games based on oh, theremins. I, I'd, I'd listen to the fuck out of that. Like, fucking <laughs> theremin jam sessions. 
I was just going to say, we're, we're going to see some riffs on the theme of a functional Linux game. Ooh. Technically, it, technically, it spawns a window, so it works, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, Game Jam's Game Engines. Yes, uh, Godot. Uh, they have a bit of an update here. Uh, you can find that in our show notes. Um, Godot 3.2 will allow you to disable editor features. And one might think, well, why would I want to cripple the functionality of my editor? And they br- they bring up some very valid use cases. Like, if you're developing a 2D game, it doesn't really make sense to have all this 3D game crap clogging up your workflow because you're not going to use it. You want to reduce your experience to focus on things that you're actually doing. Um, some uh, people use... Uh, large deployments of Godot to actually handle game development. And so maybe you want like, you don't want the mod- the uh, modelers, the people like implementing textures or whatnot to be able to affect other parts of game code. And so you shut those features off so that they can just work on the thing that they need to work on. Um, it's, it's just a nice feature to have. And I honestly, I wish a lot more tools would have something like this, uh, especially mm-hmm. like IDEs, just because they get really cluttered. If you have tons of plugins or extensions enabled, just being able to remove it from like all the menus. So you don't have to think about it. It's nice. Yeah, and allowing developers to streamline their experience while building a game, it's a game all of its own. So you really want to make sure you're giving the best experience regardless of what anyone is doing with your engine. So if you're tailoring the editor for whatever that specific person is creating, you can either go down really deep or you just have a bunch of tick boxes it's like okay i don't need this i don't need this i don't i don't need this there gone that's good (laughs) especially in development you want to you want to and remove the possibility of like someone fat fingering something and then putting it in version control and then it just you gotta hunt down what the fuck happened (laughs) actually i think just to keep in check with everything we have another go to story so let's go ahead and jump down to the end on that to get them all in one all right. shot all right uh, okay. all, all right <laughs> speak speak speaking of godot um <laughs> mozola just gave him a giant stack of cash um Woo-hoo. yeah 50 yeah, this, grand this 50 grand uh it's actually chopped up into three bits um they get it for three things number one um because they uh godot is actually developed in godot um, technically, you can produce a build of it that runs inside a browser, and Mozilla wants to experiment with that. And I'm not really sure what that will accomplish functionality-wise, but it will probably show mm-hmm. up a lot of the upstream like WebAssembly stuff because, you know, oh, hey, you got to get this thing working in here anyways. So by fixing that implementation, it will probably – you'll probably, like ha- – have uh, some overlap with other things that need to get fixed. Um, thing number B is uh, they want uh, to implement more WebRTC stuff uh, in Godot. So that could be for in-game voice chat, some kind of event system, and just using messaging queues as opposed to using like XMPP or something like that. Doesn't matter. More WebRTC is good. It's what we're using to record the show right now. If we can improve, if Firefox implementation improves as a result of this, I'm not seeing a downside. And point number I, 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 um, they want this part of this is to um, get some nice bespoke high quality assets to use in demos because the you want to avoid programmer art when you're trying to like show off your engine to people and be like, look at the cool stuff you can do with this. You want something kind of nice and flashy. Maybe we'll get a sleek and sexy version of Godet. Who knows? Mm. I don't. But that, that's what that 50 grand is paying for. Hey, man, yep. talking about a fully formed and functional game engine to something that had a game engine and people questionably used <laughs> right? it to make games. Um, <laughs> Breezy, this is, this is not a new game, is it, Pedro? This has been around for No, a no, it isn't. Uh, we originally talked about this game in 2016, and when I saw this in the, uh, in the notes, it's like, didn't we talk about this? And I went back and I found the original uh, GitHub repo. It's like, oh, yeah, 2016. Yeah. <laughs> Still being actively developed, but it doesn't look like much has really been done with it. No, no, it still looks pretty much the same. <laughs> uh, 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 the, the the first thing that popped into my mind was like, yeah, Snoop Dogg gets married to his Brizide, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you you had a very good question there. Yeah, was, whatever. What, so this is done in the Blender game engine, you know, that thing that Blender is no longer actively supporting. Whatever happened to that Sintel game? You know, Sintel was a neat little Blender Foundation film, and they're like, we're going to make a game out of it. And, and then mm-hmm. you could remember, they, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this was back in the dark time. This is the, what, 2014 ish? There was no Steam. I mean, it was Jordan yes. and me in like four games to cover every week. So we were very excited about this because it looked very nice. Yeah. It is day, and, but 
I clearly do think they ran into the insanity wall of like, why are we trying to use Blender to make a game? Yeah. <laughs> Unity, Unity exists now. <laughs> UE4 exists now. It's probably a better base to... By all means, make your assets and textures in Blender. But, you know, use a proper game engine to make the game... Mm -hmm. Up yeah. next! <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we have, uh, well, we have Doom, or GZ Doom, specifically. Which, Doom uh, GZ! Has yeah, it has version 4.0.0, and the big one is, uh, of course, Vulcan. Uh, they do because say it is... fucking reasons. It's, it's, <laughs> why not? It, it's the last one, right? It, it's the one that was still missing Vulcan, so, yeah. Uh, they do say it is in alpha stages, and you can just pass the uh, plus vid backhand equals zero to the command line to activate the Vulcan renderer. Uh, and they do say it's, uh, well, it's going to crash, basically. it's <laughs> It works very well in vanilla Doom, but if you start adding stuff to it, like other mods that, you know, it's Doom, it came out in 1993, there's a ton of mods for it. So if you start adding mods to it, it will crash. Just, well, it will. Spe <laughs> specific specifically, uh, mods will work that just modify the gameplay, but anything that ships its own sh uh, shaders or textures needs to obviously be ported to Vulcan because, you know, mm -hmm. you can yeah. just run <laughs> legacy textures in the new API. Um, yeah, this is 100% an alpha release, and they are demanding your feedback. I mean, it's just, it's just Doom, right? But now, now it has Vulcan. You're you definitely no, going to give every, it a, everything needs Vulcan. You're one hundred percent. You got to give it a curiosity bank. You know, it's like, hey, yeah. Oh, why am I doing this? Doesn't matter. It still had sex. Um, <laughs> still, I'm down, yeah, yeah, I'm down with this, man. They've also uh, moved it, uh, translated to several new languages. So, with more to come mm -hmm. soon. Good on that. Mm -hmm. Good on that. And yeah. why not, man? I used to say. You know, as uh, oxygen pervades our atmosphere, so should doom on the shareware when you close the app. I'm old. So, so should Vulcan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was the one that was missing, right? So you already had uh, Quake, Quake 2, Quake 3, and... Speaking of Quake 2, NVIDIA. <laughs> um, yo, girlfriend. I haven't forgot. You showed off that <laughs> balls amazing update that you did to the uh -huh. RTX Quake 2, and you're like, what? We, we never said anything about that. No, I was going to be released at the uh, beginning of the No. Mm -hmm. Where's it at? I mean, brush? E3 just happened, right? So they may have something. May, 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 maybe they're realizing, hey, you know, it, it looks a lot better, but the four, but it's still running at 45 frames a second. That's, that's, that's what you're going to get. Damn you, NVIDIA. I wanted to use my RTX cores twice. But uh, wah, wah. Okay. Wah, wah. Free droid. Uh, it's been an RPG in the Yum repo since I started using Linux. Uh, and they have a, um, a 1.0 coming up. Uh, this is the first RC for it. Uh, and like my, like many uh, early access games uh, that finally hit their 1.0, this will break compatibility with your old save. So it sucks to be you. Um, yep. <laughs> and I mean, they 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 have um, they have um, a bunch of screenshots. They have uh, some changes from the not 16.1 version uh, listed out. You can peruse those at your own leisure because links to this are in our show notes. But I just gotta say, like for open source projects. Hitting 1.0s is kind of like a major milestone because there's always this desire, especially in like a in a project that doesn't is not really beholden to any sort of release cycle mm -hmm. to be like, oh, mm -hmm. well, we, we can we're not going to make a 1.0 because 1.0 represents sort of like the complete finished state and we're never going to be finished. There's always going to be tweaks. We're going to uh, add stuff, remove stuff as time goes on, support other languages, support other platforms as they arise. And so that temptation to slap 1.0 on it um, is not really there. Well, I don't even think there's a temptation to put 1.0 on it. You think early access is bad for dragging out development. Like, yeah, like, hey, <laughs> make it open source. It's a bit of a different beast just because like the contributions are open and like people will disagree on stuff. Well, there's and, always that. And it's also a lot of people are working on it as a hobby and you don't want your yeah. hobby to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and that's the other thing too. Is like you don't want it's your hobby. You don't want to necessarily behold it to a schedule. But you wanna, once we you get want, a, you yeah, enjoy once it. we get a point release, we can review it. This is yes. true. So yes, we can. One, and one, uh, once... Planescape Tux is a big boy now, so the chairs are waiting. It's, it's <laughs> more. It's more and more Tuxablo, Tux light. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tux. Oh, well, more Fallout ish. Less of the hacky slashy. <laughs> we got to give this a bit of a mention because it's no longer a triangle anymore. And we're talking about 
Direct You're a triangle. The VK. Um, <laughs> VK layer base. Oh, DXVK's code base. A lot of work has been going into this. And by a lot of, we're talking like less than a month ago. All this thing could do was count to triangle. Now, now. The lucky. Play the lucky. The lucky. It can play fuck mothering Skyrim. I mean. The, the fogs aren't there. The shaders flicker a little bit. But the, uh, it's yeah. been a month, Pedro. A month. <laughs> Pedro Pedro's that guy. He needs to see the manager. Yes. <laughs> no, I don't need to see the manager. I think that's actually pretty impressive. But yeah, no, the the, the fonts <laughs> like, they're just hell elks, am I right? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Flickery hell elks, baby. Yep. They uh, don't yeah, die. The just, they uh, don't die. Blocks. <laughs> if you stab them, the, the fucking sun gets blotted out. <laughs> this is the truth. Oh, they make you float. Gravity shuts down. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. <laughs> kind of awesome, man. Um, but you were you, you were like, all right, what's going on? Why do why do we need um, this? And you're like, I don't know, man. Because uh, there's you know DX9, you can power your way through it with a lot of games with wine. DX9. Then there's certain games. Uh, I know one very uh, Bayonetta. It can be chuggy on a 2060 at 1080p. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that OpenGL to D3D translation layer is a bit hefty, and the methodology used by DXVK is quite clever in sidestepping it. Because as far as the game is concerned, there's no, or as far as the engine is concerned, it's just submitting you know the syscalls that it expects to mm -hmm. and getting the stuff that it wants back. Um, you gotta wonder though, given given the 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 turnaround tide here, I wonder if there was an influx of cash from nope. an anonymous source. Uh, pff, man, I'm. You don't, there, there is no, nothing you could cite to even give you that idea. <laughs> no. No, there, no, there's no uh, historical records or anything for that matter. I, I, I mean, I mean, I, I can, I can speculate that, you know, if certain interested parties, uh, it were to are, ingest a solution are, are you such alleging, as this. Are you alleging Tim Sweeney is financing the ex? <laughs> You heard it here first. <laughs> Tim Sweeney wants to kill Microsoft by using open source. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. like, but but yeah, like to 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 Ven's point, um, I think I think this will actually help quite a bit uh, with uh, DirectX nine games on a lot of systems with weaker CPUs because again, yeah. all of that translation is being done via CPU. It's wasting cycles that could have otherwise be used for you know the game. Mm -hmm. So. So again, sw do, doing the old the, doing the old uh, API switcheroo. It's like, oh yeah, no, you're just you're just doing this thing. Uh, well, hopefully improve performance. I look forward to this future where Linux is going to be like, fuck, it's going to be the meme of operating systems. Like, we'll just <laughs> yeah. run everything. Fuck it. I want to run this game from like the early twenty first century. It's like, yeah, Linux. I was like, hey, man, check out my game. Oh, I didn't release it for your operating. Doesn't matter. Here, I'll just play it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah. That, that, is, that is kind of the gr the great thing about sort of the Linux user mentality. is like, this doesn't work. I will make it work. Fuck mm -hmm. you. Yep. <laughs> Challenge but yourself no, to But the X12 is the future. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's like that one guy who's like, yeah, no, I, I, could, I was really angry that I couldn't find any programs under Linux to change my RGBs, and so I made one. Right. It's like, yep, yeah, that... That, that's that's about right. That's a new Linux user. That's like ah, oh, that kind of thing. Uh, Windows Ten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, oh, before we get out of here in the news, everyone watched the uh, Linux tech tip Linux gaming part do. Yeah, uh, no. that was a bit cringy. You Much know, more so than the first one. They, <laughs> they didn't do a bad job. It wasn't a bad job. It's just the delivery of it. <laughs> it's yeah. Linux Linus text tip thing, man. I mean, it's cringe. <laughs> That's their brand. I, I, I saw, I saw my, I saw my roommate watching that. And I'm like, oh yeah, they're talking about Lutris. I slept in that guy's couch. <laughs> I'm glad you threw couch on the end of that. Take us out of here. Coming up next, we're gonna wander through the desert for forty days and forty nights because I am Moses and these are my Israelites. Isn't that right, Ven? I'm new Israel. No, I'm not Israelite. You're, you're you Israel going Zero. Uh, uh. Is, Israel Zero. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where the accused game must survive trial by Fedora, Solus, and Ubuntu. And then, only then, can the question be asked. Was it fun?
Um, this way, th- this this time this we're way. taking a look at this way. We're looking at path time. <laughs> Walk this oh. way. <laughs> yeah. Give me a little kiss like this. Anyways, we're taking a look at Pathway. It's by Robotality. Uh, it's done on a custom engine based on LibGDX. You can pick it up for about 15, 16 bucks. What is it? Adventure into a strange unknown with Pathway, a strategy RPG set in the 30s. Great wil- desert wilderness. Outwit your enemies in daring turn-based combat. Raid occult tombs and make tough choices in a procedurally generated pulp expedition. Um, Robotality did send us some keys for that, so thank you very much for it. And let's get into it. Ven. Did it function? Did it function? Hey, man, it did more than function. I have no complaints on this end. On a Ubuntu 1810, it ran on the Ryzen 7 with 16 gigajoules around, powered by a 2060. Didn't try it at 1080p, but it did. Hopefully, you would expect it to maintain a solid 60 at 3840 by 2160. Graphics wise, it's hipster pixel. Didn't expect much. It delivered. It looks good. But I did notice one glitch. The Nazi German doggies would kind of disappear sometimes during transit. But they showed up at the end, and that's what matters. Controls, I kind of would have liked some controller support. I might have put more time into it if I could sit back, relax, and uh, move around like that. But your standard was fair. You click on things. Not even really was. You basically click on things. So nothing to complain about. Clean the hell. Yeah, uh, on Fedora 2864 bit with the 6700K i7 and the GTX 1080 Ti, it runs because it's a fucking hipster pixel game. <laughs> Performance, yeah, it's a 1080 Ti. This thing, th- these aren't HD tech, HD pixel packs, man. Man, listen, um, if you didn't, you didn't try RTX. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it only runs at 45 frames a second with RTX on. <laughs> Uh, graphics wise uh, they do a pretty good job of sort of modernizing the old sprite designs from like the old Indiana Jones PC games um, and like the like this sort of pixel art right here is very well done it's very detailed um, and yeah I, I think that deserves some praise and controls you just you, you click on things and it does the thing four chairs yeah uh, over here on Solus with the uh, GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600, it uh, it does launch and it respects the resolution choice, which is nothing short of absurd when a Java-based uh, engine thing works properly in that respect when others built on more established engines still fail to do that to this day. Uh, the performance at 1080p is, yes, it... It's locked at 60. There's a V-Sync option. You can turn it off. I wouldn't, but you can. Uh, and at 2160, it also is uh, pretty stable at 60. The graphics were the reason that I was prompted to send Robotality an email. It's just like, ooh, that looks pretty. I uh, want to play that. And uh, good on them. They sent us some keys. And they work as expected. And they look pretty good. Uh, the controls. Well... Yeah, like Jordan said, you click and clicky things happen. It's very hard to screw that up. So clean bill of health on Solus. I mean, you say that, but you'd be really surprised at how some people can just fuck up royally. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, oh, yeah. But, We've but, had but, anyways, <laughs> but anyways, odds are this will work on your distribution of choice, even if you have a crappy laptop, as mentioned before. But the real important question is, was it fun, Ven? Man, subjective part. Okay, I have to no, play the... I have to play the role of the person who doesn't like turn-based strategy, and that's that. Take that with a grain of chainsaw. So, going into this, I'm going to give this game a bonus soda because it does a nice fade out when you give it the Vulcan nerve pinch to the Ulta for that rage quit. And it's like, I know what you did. I know what you did, but you could still get him wait an extra second before I go to the desktop. Deal with it. It's like, fair enough, game. Good on you. But unless I'm missing something, this is basically top-down Darkest Dungeon with an overworld map and some added pixels. I went into this with a change my mind mentality sitting at my desk with my sign in front of me. Lasted 49 minutes. That's what it did. That's when I unloaded right into a dude's face and I got a miss. It was like XCOM, that picture. You know what I'm talking about. Giggity. Yeah. Every campaign is generated when it begins, so no two adventures will ever be the same. And... Uh, yeah, never have nor ever will I be a fan of RNG's Jesus having fuck or all to do with the winning or the adventure. I don't like that in my games. 
This didn't change it, no dice. I was kind of hoping to get some joy out of the combat, what we're looking at here. But it just seems hella repetitive. And, you know, before you jump in my business, half the internet tends to agree with the repetitive combat on this game, at least according to the review page. Because after I read everything, I was like, I need confirmation bias. I'm like, hey, some people <laughs> agreed with me. Um, FT Nazi, no per pixel edition, featuring permadeath, simulator 9000 can be safely passed if you're not into this jam, turn-based gaming. However, it's fucking pretty, man. Jordan, you're right about that. It looks the business. So, I'm just gonna say one on that, but again, this is not gonna change your mind about this type of game. But if you like this game, stay tuned. Yeah, speaking of which, this game has what I like. Grid-based tactical <laughs> combat, FTL-style map exploration, and gear min maxing. Um, the fights actually do require a bit of thunking, too, because you're generally outnumbered, and you need to take advantage of positioning, and you gotta you gotta cheese the AI, because they're a little dumb, so you gotta... You, you, you can't just go into this um, guns a-blazing. You gotta lure people out and kill them one at a time, or else you'll just get murderated. <sighs> And that's sort of where the resource management stuff comes in because there's a fixed pool of health for your characters uh, throughout the entire adventure. And there are healing items and armor boosts and stuff and stuff that will periodically heal you, but that's not guaranteed. And so actually quite a lot of time uh, you want to avoid combat whenever possible. And this game kind of does the West of Loathing thing where every character has a list of traits that will lock or that will unlock specific options, kind of like uh, FDL. Um, and yeah. That, that's kind of what I like about it. Although I will say there's sort of like um, the game sort of de-emphasizes exploration because you have a fixed inventory size and you get a lot of fuel in F FT. Blah, blah, damn it. <laughs> you get a lot of fuel in FTL. You do not get a lot of fuel here. And by the end of it, like you maybe ha there's maybe like three gas cans left before uh, if you if you just take like an optimized route uh, to the end point of the map. Uh, which is a shame because the maps are huge and there's like, oh, look at all these landmarks you can go explore, except you can't really because then you'll run out of gas and you'll be fucked. Um, you can level up your dudes, which is a thing that happened to me once uh, in my uh, 90 minutes of gameplay. Uh, and yeah, there's, 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 a bit of, there's a bit of a grind thing because you got to make sure that your dudes have, you know, the appropriate health and armor and gear to take, go up against challenges. Otherwise, your damage output's not going to be great and their numbers will be bigger than yours and you'll die. Speaking of stats, though, I'm pretty sure the stats are lifted like straight out of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, which is a nice touch. Um, yeah, overall, I, fair, I enjoyed this game. It, has, it does the grid-based tactical combat a bit all right. Uh, I kind of, I kind of, I'm with Pedro in the sense that, like, it's very unforgiving if you fuck up. Like, if you move, that's it. Mm -hmm. You can't go back, which is, which is really annoying because, like, some, especially in stuff like Into the Breach, it's like, okay, I'm going to move this guy over here temporarily. What can I hit? What are my options? You sort of yeah. have to, you have to plan way too far ahead and, like, minor mistakes will end up costing you quite a bit. So I kind of wish it was a little more forgiving in that regard. Even even like even XCOM lets you like un doesn't force you to commit until like you actually pick the second action. So that's that's definitely a thing. I'll give it three chairs though. Uh, I I enjoyed what I played of it. Yeah, it's uh, XCOM meets renowned explorers with a dash of FTL in the resource management and the map exploration. Honestly, there's a lot to like in this game. Uh, all the characters have their pros and their cons, and the game gives you enough hints in the mission description, if you actually take the time to read that, uh, on what you're going to be up against the most. Uh, chances are you'll run into a couple of zombies in some of the random encounters, but yeah. Uh, I also like that there's now a game where characters can be inherently strong or weak against Nazis. Oh, you're a sniper. That That's cool. Um, what exactly does being weak against Nazis Nazis mean. In any case, uh, I wish I'd had more time this week to actually play the game properly because this is my jam. This is what I like. Uh, it's a bunch of elements taken from a bunch of different games and they were all very simplified uh, so they would all work together and complement each other. But yeah, like Jordan already mentioned, it wouldn't hurt to have like an undo move option. It's like, oh, I moved this character here, but now I can actually hit the Nazi. That's yeah, that 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 sucks. Nazi. Uh, yes. Nazi. And 
Gotta the get, gotta get uh, some Nazi scalps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the like the starting roster. You start with like I think it's eight or nine characters unlocked. Maybe broaden that out a little bit because yeah, th- th- those options they're a bit limiting in my opinion so yeah it definitely gets three chairs very deserving three chairs a very good looking hipster pixel game good job i do want to bring this up i gotta bring this up um there's an option for this but out of the box this is dog murdering simulator Nine thousand. i mean Mm -hmm. there's so many murdered dogs that there's an option in the menu it's like i would like to not kill dogs (laughs) <laughs> I, I i do like how they make a little after you shoot them too um i i i disagree with you about the starting roster just because like it's you at the beginning of the game you're supposed to feel like gimped the entire idea is like as you progress and as you build up the characters and as you get more and more of them you're like you you your your toolbox expands i think that's it it sucks at the beginning, but it's supposed to suck at the beginning you're sp- it's it there's supposed to be like a, a sense of progression there so hmm. anyways Coming up next, we got we got we got some hate mail. People don't like the store and people don't like me. Surprise. You see over here at Linux Gamecast Weekly, you don't have to limit your options. You can literally shout at us on the, the street. You can leave you a comment on that. YouTube. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> whiff. Whiff. Keep going. Uh-huh. Uh, or leave us a comment on Patreon. Hell, if you're giving us money don't yeah, you limit get, your uh, options just make sure you run linux <laughs> linux <or> linux <laughs> i mean it'll play windows games nowadays pretty re- reasonably so yeah you might as well so uh yeah if you'd like to let us know what exactly it is that we fucked up royally during the show you can go to linuxgamecast.com you hit the contact button make sure lgc weekly is the thing what you're sending your hate mail to and would uh, be very, very disgruntled to feature your thing right here, right now. And uh, there were a couple of people who decided to take us up on that particular offer this week. First up, we have Tom, and he's asking about Steam. So, Windows Heretic, hello. Uh, But still... (laughs) <laughs> but still watch that's cool uh quick reminder it was popular to hit on steam on the steam store until a few years back we have we all forgotten internet hates change and new just my not point not two yes no dev steam I, has been under a hate campaign for a long long time <laughs> oh man i remember i remember when it first came out and they moved Specifically, moving Counter Strike from 1.5 to 1.6, everyone mm. fucking hated it because uh, I was like, "Oh, what?" But the game just automatically updates, so now the mods will break, and we need to we need to write mods that won't break on updates. And now, now it's like, great, I don't have to worry about patches. But back then, people ex- <laughs> there was a certain level of brokenness that we expected in our game so that we could take advantage of it. Uh, that's not really here anymore. I kind of missed out on the Steam hate train because it wasn't available on Linux. I the only experience I had with it, I remember the animated uh graph of the fisting steam, which was just the steam valve, you know, fisting. <laughs> go go yeah, on. No, that, that was accurate, but uh no, it, it Steam was horrible when it was first introduced. It sort of got you know, usable at around 2007, 2008. And then, well, it became dominant, so very dominant that it was the cool thing to do was to hate on it. So basically, Steam's history up to this point has been one of hate. Yes. And and to to, to a point, there wasn't really anything like Steam when Steam came out, right? There were digital yeah. storefronts, but nothing, <laughs> nothing to the level of what Steam was doing. And a lot of the hate being aimed because this, this is actually a bit of hate mail about the Epic Store. Uh, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot, a lot of hate being aimed at the Epic Store is basically related to we have you have an example of like a functioning store. Yes, there are many problems with Steam. That's not what we're here to discuss. But if you're going to come out with the product, have some basic feature parity beyond just I'm going to let you buy games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How about a shopping then- cart? <laughs> yeah how, how, how about how about how about some how about some multiplayer action so that you can just right click join people that how about a reign of terror yeah how about linux all right, all right. so this is sort of some massive only 
and he says, the reign of terror needs to end. I think it's about time we end his reign of terror with his beady eyes and flappy head. It's time for all of us to exercise the Canadian from LGC and embrace the giggles of the one and only Jill underscore Lynch girl. All hail Jill. I don't know. We don't have to fire Sandy. He's doing okay. Yeah, Sandy's all right, man. What do you got against Sandy? Yeah, don't don't hand on Sandy. For fuck's sake, man. Don't be like that. And on that bombshell, <laughs> I, I I just wanted to see where Pedro was going to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of all the other Canadians we'd had on the show. It's like, yeah, no, we had Scott on for like an episode of LWDW, and. So, uh, yeah, he wasn't, he's, he's, you know, as a streams. host, but yes. <laughs> Let's kill the motherfucker. <laughs> it's, it's, it's done. You killed it. We're done. You can always find us around 930 Eastern Standard Moon Time. You know where we're at. Come say hi. Hop in Discord and tell us how sexy we are not. If you want to get a hold of me, I'm at Vin Stone on Twitter. Or at Vin Stone, probably, on mass.linuxgamecast.com. I am Jordan Spung, and my reign of terror will not cease. You will bow before me. I'll shall love me in despair, and to dispense with your love, you can follow me on social media at the Burning Fool on Twitter. Plus, or, no, no, no more plus. No plus. Uh, or at, no at, Fro, or at Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Well, did, did just go on Twitter. It's at unaccounted four. That's F O U R because someone already had the stupid number four. Yeah, Twitter. That's where I am. You can find me there. Hi. Don't kill dogs. <laughs> Seems legit. Seems legit. Dog. Yo, dog. I heard you like dogs, so I put a dog in your dog so you can dog while you dog. That just sounded dirty. Because it was. <laughs> Dog. Dog. <laughs> Dog. The aristocrats. <laughs> <sighs> you know, I've watched that once. And it is all right. Yeah. I mean, it's that's the thing. It's not that funny a joke. No. But I respect, like, taking it out to that level. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, the, in and of itself, the documentary is an interesting concept. Here is a very loose framework for a joke. Let's see what people do with it. Mm -hmm. So I, we like that. You know, here's a very loose framework for a podcast. Go with it. <laughs> 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 and we have uh, we are for, we are the aristocrats of Linux gaming. <laughs> Because we're all inbred. The scary thing about it, man. Like, we're the old guard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fucked up. <laughs> I mean, if okay. This is the legacy. Then you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. I mean, See, what, we're, what, we're what, the what, incumbents. What's gonna be worse <laughs> is if you hit the one year or the ten year mark. It's like, what the fuck? We're. Uh, Come more. It is so good to take over. Bad fire girl. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Five dudes. <laughs>